Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here for motionnewtutorials.net with a new tutorial about how to create this cool blue look on a footage in After Effects to mimic that blue CG snow icy look that you might have seen in Game of Thrones whenever they're talking about the Night's Watch or anything where it's wintry and at the wall. And in this tutorial, we're gonna focus on how to create this blue color grade specifically in After Effects. In the other part of this, I talked about creating this Game of Thrones looking stylized CG snow in After Effects. So if you wanna check that one out first, you can do that by clicking that thumbnail or watch that one after this. You can watch them in either order or just not watch that one at all if it's not your thing. And here we're gonna talk about how to create this blue look and really customize this look and push it in small details in After Effects using this Lumetri color effect that was new in the recent versions of CC updates. So I got this footage of our close-up character slash my wife playing the role of very serious looking shot. So maybe there's a wall or some crazy ice person out there or whatever's going on. I lost track a bit on what half the battles are that are going on in that show. And we want to add that blue look. So what I'm going to do is make a new adjustment layer and I'm going to rename that CC for color correction. And rather than just throwing a basic curves effect on it and pulling and pushing the blue or grabbing something like a hue saturation and just trying to tint it or even getting tints or something. What we can do now is get this Lumetri color effect, drag that on. And if we pop open these tabs, there's actually a lot all within this effect. It's basically a whole color correction suite all within here. And it works pretty similar to what you can do with camera raw settings in Photoshop. So if you're in Photoshop and you're doing photo editing, what you could do is either shoot in camera raw or go to filter camera raw filter and really push a lot of the little details of our footage, such as temperature, exposure, contrast, highlight, shadows, and really adjust the nuances of that as well as lots of other details and this new Lumetri color that's part of Premiere and After Effects lets you do the same thing. So we have our basic color correction, we have creative options, curves, color wheels for small little details and even vignetting without having to add a solid and adjustment layers for curves and all that. So you can do it all within this one effect. So it's good to go tab by tab and kind of work it. Now there are these basic looks in creative. If we just quickly popped on one of these blue ones, there are some starting points, but they can be a bit extreme. So what I like to do is really customize it and maybe use one of those in a small amount of intensity, just as kind of an addition. So to start, we can kind of rework the color temperature down and it's gonna give us kind of that bluish. If we went the opposite, it's gonna give us the orange indoor looks so if you're creating something post-apocalyptic or for like Fear of the Walking Dead, basically you'd go to the right. If you're doing Game of Thrones, you go to the left and then you get blue. And there you could make both of the most popular shows on TV already. Now our tint, we're not gonna really adjust, but that would adjust our red and green look, go either that way. And that's good as kind of a base, but it's just kind of looking kind of greenish, bluish, and not really manipulating the details. So what we wanna do is kind of start pushing some of our contrast and getting some of that range back. And we can also turn up or down our highlights, our shadows. And what we wanna do is create the biggest range of color within this. So we don't want it to look flat where there's not a lot of variation, but we also don't wanna have it completely blown out on the white or black where we're not seeing anything. So we want some good detail even in the darker and brighter areas. So. So we can adjust these a little and push our contrast and we get it. And you can see we're already kind of getting that feel. This would be fine to kind of just, if we're in a hurry to tint it, if we turn this effect on and off, you can see we've already gone quite a ways away from our original footage, but it's not just looking like it's making everything blue. We're still getting some of that original color. Now what's cool, in addition to that basic color grading is we can really adjust it with our creative tabs as well as our hue saturation and color wheel so we can kind of tweak the colors even further and put a little bit of that back in there so again what's cool is you could add a look on top of that so maybe we want one of these blue ones blue ice blue intense but as the name states those are a bit intense but what's nice is we could turn the intensity barely on so maybe we have our original look and then we're just adding a small amount of that bluish tint to it 
if we check that on and off, you can see it's very subtle in this case, but that could be nice. Now, what's cool is it's looking pretty blue and we wanna keep that, but we could actually reverse our shadow tint a bit. And if we just push that a little towards the orange, again, subtle, we're gonna keep that bluish look but it gives us a bit more warmth and we could do the opposite with the highlight tint. Maybe we'll pull that towards blue. Again, just adding little details in the color here and there. And we could also try the opposite. Maybe if we have the highlight tint be orange and the shadows be slightly blue. Again, just good to kind of test things out. Now, next we can move on to our curves. This is the amount of contrast in our overall image on this white dot and each of our color channels for RGB. So if we can create a little S curve, it's gonna push the contrast even further for our dark points on the bottom and our white points on the top. And again, we could turn it on and off so we can see what we're doing and kind of keep it subtle. If we wanted to push our blue a little bit further, even we could get this blue dot, really push that a little, or if we wanted to you know, take that out and go the opposite way, we could just pull that down. And now what's really cool is what we can do in these last two tabs. We have our hue saturation curve. So what we could do is either click on these color dots or click to make dots. And then say we wanted the blues only to be really saturated. We could really pull that and you can see how saturated that's getting, but only the blues. And we could use this to take color out of a shot. For example, this sign in the back is really the only thing that's kind of this red. And even though it's not that distracting, we might want to just take some saturation out of our red areas. If we pull this down versus push it up, you can see it's desaturating the red colors. We could do the same thing with the different color areas of our footage. So if we wanted the grass to be a little subtler, what's nice is you can keep it your tones that you're doing and really manipulate individual hues of color without blowing out the saturation of the entire thing. And in this next to last one, we can adjust the intensity and color of our shadows, mid-tones, and highlights separately. So if we wanted to bring up all of our shadows a bit or down our highlights with these little levers, we could do that. We could also similarly add a little warmth back into maybe our shadows and mid-tones. And again, adding those blue tints, but then keeping in some of that warmth for things like skin tones is gonna to go a long way with giving it that tint, but not giving away that it is a color grade and making it look too extreme, like it's all just a big blue mess on top of it. And again, what's nice is you can do all of these sequentially and you can always go back. So if you feel like we need to add a little bit more blue on our curves, we can do that. And the last thing we could do, which is always a nice film look, is we could check on our vignette. And if we go negative, it'll add a vignette to our footage and we could adjust the feather. So if there's no feather. You can see what we're actually doing. We could turn that up. We change the roundness. And now you don't have to do that on a separate effect or a separate adjustment layer. And now if we press zero to RAM preview this, you can see even though this footage was shot in daylight, we can really manipulate it and give it this cool blue wintry look. That's a really stylized look that you're probably seeing all over the place in shows like Game of Thrones or whenever they're trying to create kind of a dark winter look. And on top of that, we're creating the CG snow that I talked about in the other tutorial using Trap Coat Particular. So if you want to learn about the other half of creating this ice blue wintry Game of Thrones look of creating this 3D particle system for our snow particles in After Effects with Trap Coat Particular, you can check out the other tutorial where I get all into how you do that. And if you want to learn more about motion graphics, VFX, and other compositing, check out some of those other tutorials by clicking any of those thumbnails. I got lots of tutorials on compositing visual effects and how to create these Hollywood TV style effects and looks. And if you want to take a look at these files and really dive into exactly how I made this and what all of the settings specifically are with these examples in After Effects, you can do that by supporting the show on either motiontutorials.net and clicking support the show where you can donate and throw in a couple bucks and I'll give you these project files and a couple others that you want or by heading to patreon.com slash seanfrangella where you can become a weekly subscriber of the show and throw in a couple bucks per tutorial to get up to three 
project files from my tutorial, or if you want access to all my project files, that's about 100 at this point, on all sorts of Cinema 4D After Effects and VFX topics, you can pitch in at one of the higher levels, even if you just want to do it temporarily and get access to tons of project files. Even throwing in a couple bucks helps me to be able to set aside the time each week to make these new tutorials. Or if you just want to watch this, not throw me any money, that's fine too. If you have questions, you can hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella, or you can check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash motion tutorials. And as always, subscribe at youtube.com slash Sean Frangella for weekly tutorials to your inbox. And if you want to keep learning, again, be sure to check out some of my other tutorials on the CG particle snow, rotoscoping, 3D camera tracking, and any of those other topics by clicking those thumbnails right there. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video.